The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Great Garment Graphics webinar. I'm Peggy Dwyer, and with me today is Allison Zaccaro of Great Garment Graphics. Hi, Allison. How are you? Great, Peggy. How are you? Really good. Got kind of warm weather here in the Detroit area. It's actually in the 50s today, so that's nice, but that can change, too, really quick. So um, today's webinar is going to be split front jersey hoodies um, in zipper hoodies, basically. And this is part one of a two-part series. Today, what we're going to on, and we'll go through the slides, and I'll explain it more in detail, is everything that you can Peggy, we can't and hear you. Fronts. You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? No. Now I can hear you. You were there and then you just totally and then disappeared. I disappeared. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay. Thanks, Allison. Let me know if we're having problems. And um, for those of you okay. that uh, want to type in questions, um, you know, there is a box for you to type in questions for us, which we love getting, and we usually address those live, or, you know, we wait to the end of the presentation to answer some of them. So please feel free to ask as many questions as you have. Um, but what I would say, today's part one of front jerseys and zipper hoodie webinar, and next week, Thursday, we have part two, which is for those of you that aren't just heat sealing, which is what we're focusing on today, but next week is for everyone that sews, uh, whether it be hand sewing or the uh, embroiderers that are out there that are actually sewing jerseys. So we're going to show you how to do that um, next week, Thursday. Okay, so we're going to get started. And today's webinar is going to go over, let me grab my little highlighter, uh, zipper hoodies. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about button down jerseys. Anything we were talking about with a split, and just shy away from it. They don't, you know, they think it's too difficult to do, or they don't know how to apply graphics to it, you know, um, and they think that, you know, they might make mistakes. Garments with button downs and are not cheap to practice on. So we're going to go through some tips and tricks, show you some videos, show you the computer um, and how to actually create some of these designs um, so that you walk away today uh, feeling more confident on how to actually decorate uh, the hooded um, zipper hoodies or the button front jerseys. So we're going to talk about um, <clears throat> using screen printing. Transfers. Screen printed transfers is something that you just order. We're also going to talk about using CAD cut heat applied vinyls in works live, which is do it yourself. So these are for the folks that have vinyl cutter, assigned vinyl, and have access to software to create their own designs. So we're going to show you that also. And then um, the third one is using Sim Stitch, which is plated twill. It looks like it's actually stitched on the garment, but all you have to do is heat apply it. And that's something that you order. There's no uh, labor involved in doing it yourself. So those are the things that we're going to touch on today. <clears throat> now, zipper and button fronts. Um, we're going to show you today how you can print directly over a zipper front with a transfer. So here is a cheer team. Um, that he has cheer and team and panthers and the zippers going right through that design. This one you could see a little bit better. Um, it's got the football on here and the zippers going all through the panther, the varsity, and the football portion. And this is not as hard as it seems. And we're going to show you in a video um, us actually doing a zipper hoodie. We're also going to. Um, show you how to create and cut your own design using a vinyl cutter in CAD Works Live. So we're going to show you how we did this devil's jersey on this button down.
We're also going to show you how you can get the look of sewn twill, such as this Braves, without actually sewing it at all and uh, without the labor of actually sewing it down, but still getting that same look in the higher retail value. Any of the jerseys that you see today, because we get asked this all the time, where are you getting the jerseys from, you know, um, how much do they cost, we're going to break down the cost at the end of the but you might want to write some of these down if you're just new into the business and wanting to find button-down jerseys um, these that we use today came from Teamwork Athletic Apparel in their teamworkathleticapparel.com um, and then a big supplier um, that supplies such as Sanmar and Broder Brothers uh, the ones that we use today was SNS Activewear ssactivewear.com so they do sell sports uniforms um, and button down um, basic basic shirts at a lot of your t-shirt retail uh, wholesalers too something about split fronts though we're going to give you a couple of tips on doing this you do have to be aware if you're going to order split front jerseys about the difference in the spacing and what you should try to find is a jersey that's got between the second and third this extra wide space. It's usually a five to six inch uh, spacing between the second and third button. The reason why manufacturers do this is because they know you're going to be running <clears throat> words across it for uh, team wear. So a lot of them will space the button large to accommodate the design. <clears throat> you could get a less expensive jersey that doesn't have the spacing. Now this is just a jersey right here that's a button front, which is probably a lot less than this one that's right here, um, and it does not have that extra spacing between the buttons. There's space just the same as an everyday shirt that you would wear. Now can you decorate on the Sure you can, but um, we're going to show when we used a garment like this and when we use a garment that has um, the actual uh, wider spacing in it because that will make a difference. You don't want to get caught with something that's not going to fit between these buttons. But usually the manufacturers will let you know or you could see a picture that actually has the uh, spacing in it. <clears throat> Another tip, if you're going to be doing hoodies with zippers, try to get hoodies that have metal zippers, not plastic. There are a lot of them now that are plastic um, for the zippers, and you've got to be careful because if you put that under your heat press and you're pressing something at 360 degrees um, and you're pressing it zipped up together, you know, you might fuse the zippers together and we don't want that happening because then you'll never get the zipper up and down ruin the garment and you do also have to be careful of what the content is on the string now you hoodies do not have strings on it because of the uh, US you know banning strings because kids were harming themselves with it but on the adults they still have strings on it and some of them sometimes get out of acrylic and if you get this caught underneath your press, um, it will burn completely off or it'll singe it apart or flat. So um, usually this portion of the hoodie, because it's so big and bulky, you're going to have off your press anyways, um, so not to get the strings in there. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to put a transfer on a hoodie. And this is the hoodie that we did. This is Trojan's Lacrosse. Um, it's a straight transfer that was per Transfer Express. Uh, it is in Ohio. That is one of our sponsors. And they have a great blog at transfer.com. And on their blog, it um, shows you, you could type in zipper fronts and split fronts. 
and they have step-by-step -step directions on how to actually do a button front and a zip. Um, so they have a really educational blog. Um, but we're going to take, we did it. They sent us a trailer and we put it on this hoodie. So I'm going to go over and Allison's going to explain the video. So we're going to do putting a goof proof transfer and goof proof is the transfers from Transfer Express that have the best opacity. So you see that white that's on that zipper front that we have, still true white. Um, and that's what a goof proof is. And we're going to show you the video. OK, so while I'm doing this, Peggy, can you check your audio? Because you were cutting in and out a lot. Um, but what we're doing here is we're actually cutting the transfer, or I'm actually, you don't have to actually cut the transfer, but I'm trying to give myself a center mark because it's kind of difficult when you're looking at that paper to determine which, um, where it's centered. And you want to center that center line directly above the zipper area. Um, you have those two seams. So what I did was I just took my scissors and put a center hash mark on the top of the transfer and on the bottom. And I'm using those as reference points to line them up over top of my zipper area. And you're just, you're going to zip your hoodie up, put the pillow inside, um, you're going to center it over using those hash marks, and then you're going to heat apply it. The um, goof proof goes on at 360. 365 and it's uh, five to six seconds and then it is a hot peel so when we're finished um, the press is going to beep and we're going to open it up and I'll, I was using the swinger so we'll swing it away and then we're going to go ahead and peel the transfer off nice and smooth even motions across all the way across and you will see that the zipper is there now you're just going to take that zipper and unzip it all the way down where that transfer is and you'll see some of the edges are not completely sealed down um, because there was a seam there so what you're going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to heat press those again with the cover sheet just to make sure that you seal those edges over the edges of the um, the seams there and that's what we did. We just went back and hit it for about five more seconds. And that will finish it off and make sure that it's um, sealed all the way around so you don't have any crackering or peeling. But that's probably one of the easiest ways to heat apply something onto a zipper. And now you'll see we'll zip it back up and we'll take the pillow out. And we can hold it up and now you'll see it's nice and all the way across. And I apologize. I think I might have, I, I know a couple people have typed in. Allison, can you hear me? Yes, I can now okay. much better. Um, that I might have a short in my microphone, so I'm not going to move. And <laughs> hopefully that takes care of um, But going back to what Allison said on the video, this is one of the easiest ways to decorate a zipper hoodie. Uh, if you want to get completely across and, you know, not worry about stopping and starting the design. If you were to order this from Transfer Express, you would just order an easy print. Um, you know, you don't have to tell them that you're putting a hoodie because you're putting it on with the zipper already up. And um, it, it, it's amazing how quickly that was done. So now we're going to put a transfer on a button down. This is different. Um, there are two steps, involved in, two steps involved in doing the zipper front because you deal those edges around the seam. So you do have to hit it again to make sure everything is perfect. Um, but doing button down, now this button happens to be a teamwork, and this one is also that has that extra space because you wouldn't be able that extra space in the buttons be able to put this entire design especially 
uh, in between regular buttons. But we've got to go on how to that, and this is really easy too. Okay, and then Allison's going to walk us through how we did this, and you could see that we're measuring it. Yep, we're going to measure the space in between the buttons just to make sure that the transfer that we put on there is going to fit. And you'll see it is a um, extended space, so it's five inches. Peggy, can you get rid of that box that we have in the middle of our playback? Thank you. Um, so you'll see it's it's about five to five and a half inches, which is an extended space in between the second and the third button. And we're physically going to cut this transfer, where the other one we didn't cut at all. This one we are going to cut. And the way you determine how to cut it is um, you want to line it up on your garment first. So you can line it up and see kind of where it should go. Remember when you're doing a button down, there's about a one and a half to two inch placket width that's going to overlap and you want to make sure that you accommodate for that. You don't want to cut your transfer right directly down the middle because then it will look top heavy on one side. So you want to you want to put, you know, like 3 quarters of it on the top side, the buttonhole side, and about a quarter of it on the underneath side. And you never want to cut directly in the middle of a letter. You want to try to do it, you know, off in between a letter. Just gives you a little bit more leeway. Once you do that, you lay everything down on the um, shirt, just like I did. I lined both sides up, and we're heat applying both sides at the same time. Um, and again, it's a goof proof, so it's 360, 365, five to six seconds, and it's a hot peel. So we're going to peel these um, transfer paper, the transfer paper off, and the transfer is going to be left. And there is going to be an area under that overlap where the transfer may not have applied completely. So that's why what we're doing is we're going to unbutton our jersey before we peel that uh, button side off. We're going to unbutton the jersey, leaving it on the um, heat seal machine the entire time. And sorry, obviously it was taking me some time to unbutton it. And we're just going to swing our heat press back. And we want to make sure that we get um, and get a nice good press on that area that falls in between those buttons. So we're just going to heat it for a couple more seconds to make sure that that area doesn't have any problems. And then once we open it, we'll peel it off, and it will be just fine. So you're going to peel the top right away, but the underneath side, you're going to unbutton it and reheat it for a couple seconds because you want to get that nice crisp edge along there. And we'll take the pillow out. We're going to button it back up, and we'll show you what it looks like. That came out really nice. Looks really good. It does. Okay, so that's how you would do a transfer on a button down. Real, real simple. You're still going through the two-step process, um, you know, and the two-step process when you're doing transfers is to just basically catch the edges on seams or underneath the button front make sure that, you know, everything is heat applied properly so nothing will, um, you know, pull up or have any kind of rough edges. But then it's on there permanent. Um, so this is doing transfers and zippers is just fabulously easy. <clears throat> now, we're going to talk about everything that is cutting. And for those of you that are today, uh, you know, if you have a heat press, you could do the transfers we just showed. If you have a vinyl cut that you, you know, a signed vinyl cutter that you are buying roll goods for and creating your own, this is a portion for those folks that are doing that. So this is CAD cut um, on a down jersey, and you're that the jersey 
use and you, the other buttons like right up here is one of those jerseys that doesn't have that extra spacing in it. The reason why <clears throat> we were do that is because we have actual um, ability to create design to make it fit between that not extra spacing. That's kind of hard to do if you're getting something supplied to you, uh, like a paper or uh, a design stall um, without actually seeing it because you don't know if it's going to fit between those buttons. So that's the lot of custom is that you know you can control the design to make sure that it does. Now what we did on this, it's CAD. So for don't. Um, ever seen before is we cut the design and this is the design here cut um, and it has a split so that it's uh, you know split it um, and line it up on the jersey and do this right in cat live um, we all I wanted to put something that had to do with devils on it so Allison and I some uh, flame and we took a little flame that you'll see, and we put the flame on the eye instead of using it on the eye. <clears throat> so now we're going to show you how we heat applied this first, and it's going to walk you through how she created this in Cat Live. Okay, Peggy, they're still having audio issues. Like every other word, you're cutting in and out. Oh, I don't want um, that to happen. I know. <laughs> so can you, can you hear me at all? Um, we can hear you, but it's it's every other word. You just it's it's actually kind of annoying. Sorry. Okay. Well, <laughs> then I'm gonna We're have to have getting a whole sentence. <laughs> Go um, ahead. Oh, sorry. Let me start the video over. Okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Start the video over. There it is. Okay. So we're going to do CAD cut fashion film on a button-down jersey. Like Peggy said, um, we actually created this file in CADWorks Live, and we're going to heat apply it on a button-down shirt. And this is a button-down shirt that does not have that extended spacing. Um, and I'm laying it out, again, using a Teflon pillow because even though we are dressing a platen, um, you want to use a Teflon pillow because you have buttons and seams and zippers. So those are going to throw your pressure off. I'm taking the CAD cut fashion film that has already been cut and weeded, and I am cutting it in half because we are going to heat apply we're going to have to separate it so we can heat apply one one section at a time really. We're going to preheat the garment always and then what we're going to do is we're going to line the top of the devils or the side that has the button holes on the edge of the placket so that when it's buttoned up it looks continuous and it has a nice even smooth flow. So you always want to line the top side up first and then you can move the opposite side vertical and horizontally in order to get it lined up with the first one. But the most important one is always going to be the top and then you'll set everything else around that. <coughs> so we're almost done with the heat application process. The preheating. And now we're going to remove that cover sheet and we're going to take our devils, the top side, and you can see I've put it all the way over to the edge, lining it up all the way to the edge of the placket, nice and straight, making sure that I fit it in between those buttons, which is going to be tricky on a jersey that doesn't have an extended space. So now we're going to heat apply this portion. We're going to cover it with a craft paper cover sheet. And we're going to heat press it. And fashion film is 320 degrees. And once um, it is a warm, it is a hot peel. So once the um, machine pops up, we'll be able to peel that. 
and we're going to put the flame on the eye right away while we have it on this side because that's where it's going to go. Okay, and you can see that's all lined up nice and straight with the edge of our shirt. So we're going to take that little flame that we had and we're going to line this up with the top of our eye. And this is gold film. Now we're going to be very careful because there's a buttonhole there. As long as you don't cover the buttonhole, you'll be able to still button it. So it is covering a little bit of the seam of the buttonhole, but it's not completely covering the hole. And we're going to press that down. Okay. Again, we're going to peel off that little bit of mylar there. And then we're going to go over and we're going to heat apply the second half. So I like to button my shirt back up so I can see what it's going to look like. And now I'm going to take that opposite side and slide it and line it up with the first side. And you want to make sure it's lined up nice and even. And that's probably the that's probably the part that takes the longest out of the whole process. Now you're going to go and unbutton your jersey. And we're just going to put the pillow back inside because again, we still have those buttons which are going to throw our pressure off. <clears throat> And this works out really good with CAD cut because the fashion film specifically has a tacky carrier on it. So once you stick it in place, you don't have to worry about it moving. I'm going to get the pillow in. And our devils is still where we had it. We're going to cover it with craft paper again. And then we're going to complete the heat application process. Okay, once that's completed heat applying, again, it's a warm peel, so we're going to go ahead and peel that off. And then you can see now it's buttoned, and you can see how even it became. So very, very simple. And that's going to be cat cut on the button down. Here's the close-up you can see. This really, can, can you hear me now, Allison? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I am so very sorry to everyone that's in attendance today that I'm having mic and headset issues. Um, so I think we're going to let Allison take most of the webinar, and I'll just go through the slides and that. Um, but we did this, and I absolutely loved it. And so now Allison's going to show us how she created it in CADWorks Live and kind of explain to you what CADWorks Live is. So I'm going to turn this uh, presentation to your screen. Allison so they could see your computer. Okay. While Peggy's doing that, um, I'll tell you a little bit about CADWorks Live. CADWorks Live is a free online design software. And um, in order to use CADWorks Live, the only thing that you have to do is you have to be a customer of either Stalls ID or Transfer Express, In Printables Warehouse, um, any of the group stall companies that you can see located down here. Okay, I'm trying to highlight them for you. Um, it's a group stall sponsored website, so it's free. All you have to do is go online onto its CAD Works with an X, live.com, um, set up your account. It'll ask you for your name, address, telephone number. It'll just take you a couple minutes to set the account up if you don't already have one. Um, and it'll ask you for a account number, and once you supply that, we'll verify it. They'll send you a little email back to your um, inbox just to verify um, your um, registration, and then once you click on that link, then you'll be live and you'll be able to use it. Um, if you don't have your account number, don't panic. Just go ahead and fill out all the information. You'll get a 30-day trial um, while they're trying to verify your account information. 
once your account information is verified, you'll have an unlimited membership. Um, if in the meantime you don't get a uh, verification, you'll still have 30 days to use it. Um, and it's not, there's no charge, it's just if you don't, if you're not an account with one of the group style companies, it'll shut you out and you won't be able to use some of the features. Um, but it, like I said, it's free online design software and it's really easy to use. There's a ton of tools on here. We, I could spend one whole entire webinar strictly on CADWorks Live. Um, there's tutorials. It shows you how to do things. But I want to show you how to create that devil's design. So we're going to go up here to our create. And we're going to go to the CAD Cut Designer 2, which is the newest version and the version you're going to want to use most frequently. And the cool thing about CADWorks Live is it does have a um, split front functionality to it. So it, it's really, really easy to do uh, split front in CADWorks Live. And it's taking a moment. I'm not quite sure why. It's sleepy today. Thursday afternoon, maybe I had too much uh, lunch. But it's slowly but surely getting up here. Here it comes. There's a ton of different scripts you can choose from and tails and all different kinds of templates and things that you can start with when you're creating your designs. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start and I just started with the script with tail, so I'm just going to click on script with tails over here on the left hand toolbar. And every time you click on something on the left hand toolbar, it's going to pull up, um, you know, a library for you in a dialog box. And here's the devils we created. And I actually started with this template. So it's Varsity Softball. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click open on my screen. Once it's opened, we're going to change our text. And in order to change text, you're just going to click on this. And I'm going to go up here to edit. Um, and you're going to edit object. And it'll say, it has the T and the, and the pencil on it, the little diagram here. It's text or an object that just has one edit button. So we'll edit. And now we have our text dialog box open. So in our text, we're going to type devils. And my preview will change always, so I always have a preview window that will let me know what that's going to look like. So this would be devils if I wanted to stay with the bloop script that this was originally created in, but I don't. I want to use that other script that we saw. So I'm going to click on my font, and I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow next to it. And it's going to take me into the font library, and I know I want a script. So in my font libraries, I have all these different categories I can choose from but I'm going to go down to the script categories. Okay, and down in the script, I mean, you can see there's two pages of scripts that you can pick from. And if you don't find something in here that you want, you can always upload your own font. That's another great advantage of CADWorks Live. But you can see here's a couple of them. If I go to the second page, you can see here's a, a few different ones. And I don't remember which one we used for devils. Um, let's see. I don't know. We'll try this one. Did I choose right? I did. Look at that. I remembered. So now you see that it's changed our preview over here to the actual devils with the design that we had. So we're going to click OK. I did not want the softball in the tail, so I simply clicked on this and hit delete on your keyboard. Okay. I know I wanted this devils to be about 12 inches wide. And you can see down here, the width right now is 5.36 inches. So in order to change that, in this width box, I can just type my 12 inch width and it'll make the devils 12 inches wide. And then I can move it 
wherever I want on my page. Okay. I want my tail to be proportionate, so probably make that a little bit bigger. You can just do that by grabbing the corners. And then I want to move the tail up so it is actually connected to my devils. And what I'm going to do before I create my split is I'm actually going to weld. And you can see why in here and in here and in here and where I added that tail, those are actually going to be cuts. And when we have a script, we want it to be one continuous flow. So we need to use a functionality called weld. So I'm going to draw a big box around everything that I want to weld together. And welding simply means that. It's just like if you're welding two pieces of metal, we're actually, you know, going to weld these, these different shapes. I'm going to go to my shaping tool, and I'm going to click on weld. And once I do that, it'll render, and it'll refresh on my page. You'll then see the um, weld. It's all one solid piece. You don't have those little cuts anymore. Okay. So now I want to add my split front to it. I'm going again to select my object, and I'm going to go to Shaping. Sorry, I'm going to go to Edit Object again, where we did before. And this is actually an effect. So we're going to click on Add Effect. And it's going to take me into my effects library, which there's bookends, borders, circle text. There's all kinds of things. But you can see down here I have a split front. So I'll click on the split front. And I'll choose, I chose the first one. And it's going to go ahead and take this design and it's going to create a split for me. That's it. can click OK. And now I have my design is split. If I want, I can select, if I go to Arrange, I can um, break it apart so I can move them further apart from one another. This is running really slow today. Um, sorry, I'm going to go to shaping and we're going to go break apart by regions because it's all the same color. And then I should be able to move these. Yeah, I'll just draw a box around this section and then I can move this over from this section. Okay. In order to add the flames, all we did was we went and deleted this dot on the eye. So I hit delete. I want to add an object or clip art, actually. So I hit clip art. And we did a search. I can go into my clip art library over here. And there is actually a flames section. And if I click on that, it's going to pull up all the flames, and this was the one that we chose. I mean, you can see there's two pages of flames, so there's all different kinds. But we picked this one. I'm going to click Open. It's going to add it to my screen. And then my flames were standing up, so I'm going to rotate them. And I can do that down here on the left-hand toolbar. Okay, I can rotate that. And you can do it in 15-degree increments, or you can do it you know, in more. You can type in more if you want. Okay. I'll keep going till we get it standing upright. Okay, and then we'll move it up here and then we can size it. Like that's a little big, so we're going to size it down. Bring it in a little bit, and then we could probably still rotate it another little bit. And that's it. I mean, that's that's your doubles right there. And then once you're ready to send this to your cutter, you'll send it to your vector cut and open it and then send it to your cutter from there. But that is how we created the split front doubles with the flames. Okay. All right. What do we have next, Peggy? You know what, um, Allison? Could you hear me? Yes. Okay. I was. Um, I think we could go to doing the artwork for their lab rats after we go through because okay. of time the other items. So we'll do that. Okay. So you want me to do lab rats now? 
Uh, no, do sim stitch. Okay. Okay, so I'm going back to you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about um, SimStitch. And SimStitch is, it's getting, it's still a heat application, but it'll give you the look of a sewn product without having to sew. Um, and SimStitch is, it's available in custom-made easy products. So you would choose your script, your tail, your colors. And what it actually does is it has an etched stitch on the edge. So it actually looks like a stitch. And it's cut out of 100% polyester twill, but it has a permanent adhesive on it. So it's laser cut, so it won't fray. And it's permanent. So all you have to do is heat apply it. And you can do it in a split front. And it's probably one of the easiest ways to get that sewn look without actually having to sew it. Okay, and we can um, show you how we're going to, we actually did another video on how to heat apply it. But here was the Pirates that we did, and this is, again, a custom-made easy sim stitch. It was gold with a black outline, and um, we'll go ahead and show you how to heat apply it with another little video that we have. The easiest way to heat apply sim stitch to start, especially when you have two color, is you know it's going to be in separate pieces. So what we did was we actually heat applied the foreground to the background first because it's much easier to move around um, you know four pieces versus eight pieces. So we're lining our foreground up on our background sim stitch. And notice I have a Teflon sheet on the bottom, because what we're going to do is we're going to heat apply that onto the Teflon sheet. And then we're going to let it set up for a couple seconds, and that adhesive will come back and play. I'm peeling, I'm pulling the drawer, the draw press out, and I took off the craft paper. And now I'm actually going to peel these off of my Teflon sheet, because it's a nonstick coating, so they're not going to stick to it. And my adhesive will still be there. But now it's going to be much easier for me to handle and line up on my jersey. And it was hot, so I was, I was trying not to burn myself. Because you don't want it to set up completely cool. OK, once you get that done, now it's time to actually get your jersey on there. And we left this jersey buttoned, again, using a Teflon pillow. And we're doing it on the Fusion, so we can use the, the draw press or the swing action, whichever you prefer will work just fine. But we're going to line it up. And again, just like everything else that we've done, we're going to preheat first. And when we start to line up the split front, we're always going to start lining up with the placket side or the buttonhole side, the one on the top. So we're going to do the same thing with this jersey. We're going to take that second half of the word pirates and line that up along the placket edge. Okay, so we're just going to lay that down on there, and we're going to line it up as close to the edge as possible. Make sure it's nice and straight. And again, in, in every application that we've done, with in regards to split fronts, this this is the part that takes the longest. It's always the lining up. Now I'm going to take the second half of my pirates, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on the left hand side, and notice there's an overlap there. There's about a half of an inch overlap, so I have an extra piece of letter A 
that I'm going to put there and I'm going to slide it under. And again, you want to make sure that it's straight and lined up. And then we'll add that second tail piece. And do the same thing, slide that underneath and line it up nice and straight. And then we'll cover it with a cover sheet always. And with SimStitch, it's absolutely imperative that you use a cover sheet. Um, because of the adhesive, there's adhesive that's actually come through where the etching is of the stitches. And that will get on the top of your heat press, which will then, again, transfer onto your next garment. So it's very important that when you do SimStitch, you actually cover it with a cover sheet in order to eliminate that. But now you can see I'm going to check and make sure that it heat applied underneath. If it did not, I would just unbutton it and hit that side again, just like we did with the transfer. Um, but it was fine. It heat applied. And you can see we have a split front that looks like it's been sewn. So, and that, that's just the fastest, easiest way. Here's another option that we have with um, SimStitch, and it's the sublimated twill SimStitch. And this was something I did a webinar um, a couple weeks ago about, but it's the new um, patterns, the text effects that you can get. And it, it's actually a variety of patterns that you can get on twill. And what they actually do is they print the twill or sublimate white twill. And then we cut around it again with that sim stitch look. So it looks like it's sewn and you can just heat apply it. But this is going to give you that pop, that extra texture. And you can see this is the word dragons that we actually ordered in a um, reptile pattern. So it looks like it has scales. Um, and on a black background, I mean, that would be very, very cool. So, And you would heat apply that exactly the same way as the pirates that we just did. Um, and again, it's going to just give you that one step above everyone else, that one little bit of extra that you can offer to your customers um, that someone else might not. Because you're never going to get that pattern, you know, from a fabric unless it's printed. So that's another option for you. And next, what's the next slide? We're going to talk about pricing. Um, we're going to do the screen printed design using transfers from Transfer Express. And the design that you see on the picture is the Bengals. And it's actually um, QBA32 in Transfer Express's idea book, if you, if you guys use any of that. Um, and then here's the design cost. If you want a one color, it'd be $2.75 for 20 transfers. And that is the per piece price. So $2.75 for one piece at 20 quantity. And then if you wanted a two color, um, you wanted you know an outline color on that, you'd be looking at $4.92 um, for the quantity of 20. And again, that's per piece. So for $5 and, you know, uh, 10 second heat application because literally that's what it took us. A um, little bit of layout time involved. You know, you can make a really nice jersey that you can, you know, charge way more for. And people would really love that. That's a very, very inexpensive way to get um, split fronts on a jersey. Okay, and I think we have some more pricing. Okay, so here's the summary of your cost. The jersey cost was 10. The design for one color was 275. So your total is 12 and three quarters, so 1275. And then you'll have to add in your labor costs, obviously. You could sell this jersey for $20, $25 easily. So you're going to probably double, just about double if you charge on the high end, um, you know, what, you, what you've. Uh, what money you have into that. So that's a pretty good pretty good way to do it. And I mean, there was labor costs involved, but it really didn't take all that much. 
Here's the summary of your costs for the CAD cut, the Devils. Um, the jersey is $10. The, um, it's $1.26 for the text in the fashion film of the Devils and two cents for that little gold flame, which it's not a lot of money. It just adds a, de a definition to it and it makes the design pop. So you're looking at a total of $11.28 material cost. Again, no labor costs involved in there. Um, selling price, again, in the $20 to $25 range. So again, you, you pretty much doubled your money there. The one thing that you have to be cautious of with this is the labor time with when you're cutting your own and creating your own artwork is obviously going to be longer than when you're ordering a design already in from Transfer Express. Um, because of the fact that, you know, you'll have to create the artwork, cut it, and weed it, so. The next one we're going to talk about is the Sim Stitch. And the Sim Stitch, again, cost of the jersey was $12. Um, the design was $508. Um, and a dollar fifty-two for the tail. So five hundred eight for the tax, a dollar fifty-two for the tail, and that's for eighteen a quantity of eighteen pieces, which is you know pretty indicative of a league, you know a team. Um, so total cost is eighteen dollars and sixty cents, but you're going to charge thirty-five to fifty dollars for this because it's going to look like it has been sewn and you're going to sell it just like a sewn product, an applique sewn product. So um, again, you still have to have your labor costs involved there, but it wasn't all that earth sh long for us to actually heat apply that product. So that is the Sim Stitch. Okay. So next week, Thursday, we are going to do another webinar on sewing of split front jerseys. And we're going to take this whole split front heat application up the next level. And this is going to be if the customer really wants that look of sewn twill, we're actually going to have some videos and we're going to show you how you can order a sew file um, from Stalls ID. They'll send you the cut pieces, the sew file, and we'll actually watch something sew out quickly from beginning to end, because watching an embroidery machine sew can be like watching paint dry. Um, but you'll get the idea of the different steps that are involved, lining it, hooping it, lining it up, putting the backing in, and all that stuff. So we'll talk about that next Thursday. So don't forget that will be part two of the, the uh, webinar. And as always, um, we would like to thank you for joining us this afternoon. Our contact information is on the screen. GreatGarmentGraphics.com is our website. We have blogs. You know, we blog regularly on there. There's a lot of great information, helpful tips. And then you, you can feel free to email us, and we will answer them for you as quickly as possible. And we went a little bit over today, but that's usually what happens when Peggy lets me talk. So, um, you know, I hope, thanks for bearing with us. And I hope you had a lot of good ideas and can take some things back with you. So, thank you, everybody.